Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, the place where you don't get your news two weeks late. And this is the week of January 17th, 2022. We got three stories this week, and the first one is kind of a big one. We're going to be talking to Haya from Drone Excel. Uh, there is a, uh, a an app that's going to allow you to fly your DJI drones using secure data mode. And I know this is something that people have been asking for a while. Uh, the second story this week is what I'm going to call the Don't Be That Guy segment. Yet again, one more time, this is the Bengals edition. I'm sure you've seen the video, but we'll talk a little bit more more about this. And then lastly, we'll talk about a drone that uh, folds itself while it flies. This is really cool technology. Just a research project at the moment, but let's get to it. All right, and the first story this week comes from our friends at Drone Excel, and we have uh, Haya today uh, to talk about this story. Uh, well, first, Haya, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Greg. How are you today? Doing great. It's always great to have you on the show. I know I talk to you every week on the Pixel, but I always appreciate having you on uh, on on Pilot Institute as well. Um, there is uh, you covered the story on Drone Excel about the software in the Netherlands that allows people to fly their drones without the fear of having any data going back to China. So can you tell us a little bit more about how this works, and then we're going to talk about what impact this could have in the United States? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so basically, around the time that we first got concerns about uh, data security with regards to DJI drones and specifically data potentially being leaked to China, which is something, as far as I know, that's never really been proved. But anyway, uh, the concerns that were, were being... Um, expressed here in the United States that also happens in Europe. And this company, AirHub in the Netherlands, is basically a service provider. They have an app that uh, caters towards enterprise users uh, of drones. And they now rolled out an app that basically uses a VPN system to make sure that all the data is monitored and it's the privacy of all the data is guaranteed. So so basically nothing, uh, nothing of the data from DJI drones can basically leave this app and the servers run by AirHub. So for the, for the customers using the this new uh, this new app, they really shouldn't have any concerns about uh, potential data leaks to uh, to China, which of course is uh, is quite a big deal. So so this is not an app that replaces the Go Four or the, um, the the Fly app from DJI. It's basically something that runs in the background that filters where the data is going from your phone, essentially, right? No, I don't think so. I think you actually fly the uh, the drones using this app. So basically, you get the same features that you normally would have in your DJI app uh, available here. And um, that way, they're able to guarantee that no data is being leaked at all. Interesting. Okay, so that's, that's very cool. So what do you think the implications of this kind of technology will have in the US? Obviously, there's been a battle. You and I have covered this over and over again on this show or on the Pixel Drone Show. Um, what, what do you think this is going to change? I think it's huge because um, right now the solution being pushed in the United States is for companies to use, and, and not just companies, but also uh, government organizations to use drones uh, that are the so-called blue SUES drones. And there's, there's only a handful of them. And the concerns with those drones is that even though they might guarantee data security, uh, these drones are a lot more expensive and don't always have the same capabilities as the uh, as the DJI drones. So for companies that have already invested in DJI drones and, and basically have already a number of drones available, um, a solution like this where you have an app that basically guarantees the safety of your information might be a much more economical and a much smarter solution to go with rather than to switch out their drone fleet and buy uh, potentially less capable but surely more expensive blue SUS drones. Yep. Obviously, this doesn't cancel the, the blacklisting of, uh, of DJI and then uh, whatever is happening in Florida as well. Now, do you think uh, there could be still uh, some people saying, especially the U.S. government saying, well, this isn't going to China, but it's going to the Netherlands. Uh, you can't trust these guys over there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, is, is that still a concern? Maybe having the servers be in the United States, the VPN? Uh, I think that might be a concern. Um, I believe right now that uh, customers in the United States could already start using this app as well. Well, but if, let's say, the concern is that data needs to stay within the United States, uh, I don't know if that's an, uh, if that's an option that AirHub uh, currently makes available. Uh, we're trying to get AirHub on the Pixel Drone Show to talk about this in, a, in, uh, in much greater detail, so we'll be sure to ask all these kind of questions. But um, what I think is very appealing is that rather than switching out the hardware and flying different drones, this might actually be a much uh, simpler less expensive solution that you can apply to all existing drones to still safeguard your uh, your information. So in that sense, I think this is uh, potentially a very interesting development. Yep, 
I agree, absolutely. Well, Haya, as always, thank you. Uh, for those of you, if you want to read the article, we'll put a link down here. Uh, head over to dronexcel.co if you want to get uh, the latest news. I know we get all, pretty much all of our information from there uh, every single week when you do this, uh, this news update. So Haya, thanks for being on the show, and we'll see you next time. Sounds good. Thank you, Greg. All right. The second story this week is the Bengals game flight over. I'm sure you've seen the video. And if you haven't, uh, please don't click. Don't look at it. This person doesn't need to get any more views, quite frankly. But last week during the Bengals game and the Raiders game, uh, someone decided to fly their drone not only over the stadium, but over the stadium and inside of the stadium as well. Uh, the operator that went on to post the video on their social media uh, looks like they were basically flying the drone about 20 or 30 feet over the field uh, during some parts of the video, uh, flying over the crowd. Obviously, there's a TFR going on. This is a major game. Uh, can get in there, can fly over people, can fly over the players. Uh, just a whole lot of uh, a series of things that you should not be doing. Please, please, please don't be that guy. Obviously, this person is getting investigated by the FA at the moment. Uh, I'm sure we'll hear more. I hope we hear more about what comes out of this. Just not something that's acceptable and, uh, and, and uh, a perfect example of what not to do. So leave us the comment down here if you've seen it and tell us what you think. Next story this week is a drone that flies and folds the wings while it's flying. This is actually really cool. This is a research project. Um, it's designed to navigate in areas where there's a lot of obstacles and uh, in probably areas where otherwise the drone would just come and crash. And it uses propeller thrust and reverse thrust in order for the aircraft to fold the two arms, two at a time, so two in the front and two in the back, in order to uh, get a smaller form factor and then fit into a smaller hull, for example, or in tighter uh, places. The folded arms can all actually also be used in order to pick up objects such as packages. So this is a cool design. Again, like I said, this is more of a, a research project rather than anything else, but uh, it's cool to see people thinking kind of outside the box. But this is all we have this week for you. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Please like, subscribe, leave your comments, and then we'll talk to you soon.